Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Soap Queen TV and Brambleberry.com. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be showing you how to turn a plain soap mold into one fancy bar of soap. To do this, we're going to be using non bleeding colors. What's a non bleeding color? Well, refer to episode 2 or head to soapqueen.com and look up the article Bleeding Soap or Hey, What's That Halo? Bleeding soap isn't always bad. In fact, look at this great bar of soap I made intentionally with bleeding colors. It's just not quite the look we're going for for this bar of soap. This bar of soap uses high contrast colors. It's completely your personal preference for which colors you want to use for your layered soap. But make sure they're non-bleeding colors if you want the colors to stay crisp and clean. Another tip, make sure you're using the same brand of soap base. Different brands of soap base dry out at differing rates, making the layers pull apart. And finally, it's important that you give yourself enough time to complete this project in one sitting. For this project, we're going to be using the Brambleberry Clear Soap Base, Brambleberry Sparkle Gold Mica, Brambleberry Liquid Non-Bleeding Oxides, and Brambleberry Mango Peach Salsa Fragrance. Melt your clear soap. I'm using about 12 to 14 ounces of soap. One expert tip I'd like to share with you is that if your soap isn't cool enough, you can always add a few chunks of clear, hard, melt and pour soap into the melted soap base. The extra energy that the melted soap base has to expend in order to melt those new chunks helps cool your soap base faster. Now it's time to add color and fragrance. This first layer is made with green chrome oxide. It's a non-bleeding oxide that I love to work with because it creates a bright, cheery color. Then add your mango peach salsa fragrance. Now it's time to pour that first layer in the mold. Now that the soap is in the mold, spritz with one final spray of alcohol. This gets rid of any bubbles and helps to release surface tension. Now, let it sit. This is the hard part. I know you want to pour that second layer right now, but you need a very thick skin on the soap to make sure it's thick enough to support that second layer. How do you know when it's thick enough? Well, there's a couple tips. One, I often blow on my layers to see if they're still rippling. If they're still rippling, it means that the soap layer is not thick enough to support the second layer. So here's my layer. Looking good, but it's not great. In fact, it needs to be thicker. As you can see, timing is vitally important to making layered soap. Make sure that first layer is thick enough to support that second layer. Now, let's go ahead and make that second layer. Melt the clear soap in the microwave. In order to get a really bright black soap, you need to use clear soap. If you use white soap, you'll accidentally get gray soap because white plus black equals gray. Fragrance this layer. Spritz alcohol on the first layer. This helps the layers adhere together. Pour evenly over the entire loaf mold. Spritz this with alcohol and wait 20 to 30 minutes for that thick layer to form. Now it's time to make the orange. I made this orange with liquid red oxide mixed with sparkle gold mica. I think it looks great and the oxide really makes it look bright while the gold helps to add shimmer, sheen, and interest. Make sure your melted soap has fragrance in it and color. Check the temperature. You want it to be below 130 so it doesn't melt that second layer of soap. Spritz the second layer liberally with rubbing alcohol and pour evenly over the second layer. Wait two to four hours to pop this soap out. I know you want to put it in the refrigerator or freezer to speed things up. Please don't. If you do, all your hard work might be for naught. When your soap is in the refrigerator or freezer, different layers may harden at different rates, causing the layers to pull apart. All right, let's pop the soap out of the mold. Pull gently away from the sides. This breaks the airlock of the soap in the mold. Then turn over the soap mold. Push down gently on the back of the soap. Do you see that airlock releasing? Gravity is doing much of the work for you. You don't need to push too hard to get your soap out. If you're pushing so hard that your fingers are straining, it probably means the soap isn't ready to come out yet. Now it's time to cut our creation. I'm using a scraper cutter. Look at those layers. Those contrasting colors did the trick. Those layers really stand out. Here's another way to use this technique. I've taken this plain, 
basic soap mold and turn it into a really awesome looking bar of soap just by pouring in three different colors. Thanks so much for joining me for this episode of Soap Queen TV. Next episode, I'll be showing you how to take some of the embedding techniques in episode four with the layering techniques we've learned today and make a really amazing, unique looking bar of soap. Until then, happy soaping. It's very festive and it reminds me of a fresh mango and peach. Does it remind you of fresh mango and peach? Okay. Does it? No? Okay. All right, fine. <laughs>